a wee teardown videos for you tonight this is the Makita 8410BV this is a new old stock Makita corded drill don't know when this is from could be 1970s 1980s not sure no year on it gonna get her up and running see if she works and we're gonna tear her down see what she's like inside see what the old ones were built like so take a look at the box 240 volt obviously been lying up a long time even the staples are all rusted like I say old stock never been used the way Makita tools used to come nice metal toolbox look at that thing that is cool really buy it just for the box and look at the old style Makita badge on her I had this out before had it up on a video this time we're going to tear it apart we're get her, going to get her working as well nice hinges nice clasps on it as well what do we get in the box? Here, get your old Makita hat. She's a bit thin. And you get your instructions, and your parts diagram, and lots of parts. We blower for when you're cleaning out the hole for masonry. Dressing wheel for sharpening your drill bits. Side handle, and your very own masonry butt. And there's your drill. 8410 BV 240 volt drill. It's only a small chuck it's on it. It's not a 12 mil, it's only a 10 mil chuck. But what a machine she was. Everybody says the same thing. We arm breaker. It lasted a lifetime. So hopefully this one's lasted in the box. Box itself, look at that thing. Only tools came with these things nowadays. You put a padding, we put a spot weld for a couple of wee supports. That's her. Simple as anything. Like a great wee lunchbox. Put that aside. Now even the cable on this thing. Proper old rubberized cable. No markings on it at all. But she hasn't started cracking, she hasn't broken over the years. Sometimes the rubber can break down and things like this. This thing's working fine. Nice wee clip and everything. Holding your key. You got a plug in this. And we'll start her up. See if she starts, farts, or sparks. Good machine. So as well go for a good plug. Stick on a nice Jura plug. Alright, moment of truth. Will she work? No bother. Even the airflow coming out of that thing. That's cool. That's the hammer mode. That's just standard drill mode. Very cool.
Oh, there's no reverse. So some of them. Now that we switch down here, forward and reverse. This one obviously doesn't. Forward only. So she's a bit limited. So you have to be dial here on the switch as well. That is just to resist how far in the switch goes to give you a different speed. Full speed, or you can wind her on, and that just basically stops the trigger going the whole way on. Just acts like a wee brake. Just gives you a lower speed on the actual variable speed switch. So that's her. Basic as that. Motor, run a wee gearbox, driving a chuck. And you've got a hammer mode as well, which basically just allows the chuck to come back a little bit more to engage in all your rattle gear inside. One switch, variable speed, no forward and reverse. Let's have a wee look at how they were built back in the day. No chuck screw in the middle of her. Just chuck is just screwed on to itself. Obviously, it doesn't need to be screwed on. Only goes one way, so it's always going to be tightening. Get her off here. Let's see if she comes off anyway. Might be hard. There's no low speed in this. Nope. Easy enough. Old Makita Chuck and has the old brand logo on it. 10 mil EL. Nice chuck it was. Probably wouldn't even get on that one. Probably wouldn't even be able to buy that good a quality chuck now. That's it. even the Jacobs chucks aren't even that good anymore. Let's bundle in. We fine thread. Nothing special that end. Heavy greases on it, aren't I? Make sure we ball in there. Have a bearing point. Not sure we rattle gear just for the hammer mode. And on this end here, you've just got your normal drive gear from your armature. Just direct drive through here. So she's engaging onto this bigger gear. Give a speed reduction and increase the torque and then down through at an angle you have this here we lever which is just a wee pin with a hollow on one side so this ends flat or this ends rounded this here's out a wee dug in a wee bit probably has a flat on it yeah just a wee flat edge now that's doing that ball bearing presses against the round bar. So, a normal drill mode. That'll be on the round bar. That'll be pressing the spindle forward. So this hammer gear will not be engaging. She'll just run smooth. And you've hit her into hammer mode then. So that's normal drill mode. Hammer mode then's got this gap. That gear. That gear just presses in a little bit. And engages this here rattle gear for the hammer. So all she's doing, she's just driving over this here. This way. Driving up these peaks and then dropping down. So literally the chuck's just going up and down. There's no actual hammer mode. It's just rattle. There's your actual spindle. No bearing on it. Steel bushiness on it. No bearing. So these things started getting stuff and clean that there out. So we oil seal up the top there as well. Nice wee bit of machining on that on it. 
just a cast aluminium part. I'll see some of the grease. Start it separate. The oil sort of wheat out of it. Nice. There's the actual badge on it. Original badge. Makita Makita Electrics Works Limited, Japan. Serial number and everything on it. But no year. Sadly. Not sure of the exact year of this one. An actual spindle as well and gear. No powder metallurgy. No powder metallurgy on it. Look at that gear. You can see the turn marks. It's been cut from one solid piece. That gear's been machined. Hobbed as well. All the teeth hobbed out of it. Hardened. And that shaft as well. I've been pressed on. Nut and bolt construction. Three screws, three nuts to hold them together. Still get my key to drills today like this here. You know the ones because they look old. So yeah, does that have a an option for variables for forward and reverse? You could easily put that on as well if you looked up a different model. They'll probably have an alternative switch to put on. It'll just be a secondary switch down here. You could wire this on if you wanted to. Obviously, we're not going to bother. Just your spring, your belt clip. I don't want to do too much of the wiring. There's not much to them. Just a standard switch. Not wired in any way special. Live neutrals coming onto these two wee crumps. Then get onto the switch. That switch is actually wired on direct. That's a very old type switch. Kpax Holland. Look at that. No screws, no nothing. No wee pins to push that out again. They're on permanently. So if you're changing that switch, you're changing these this wiring. That's an odd setup. But that's how they done it. Back in the day. Old type brush holder, still available today, still using some models. And the same, them brushes. Don't think the number. The CB57 brush is still available. I think it's now a CB60. Not 100% sure, but I think that's the number they use now. That particular brush I think is obsolete. Not actually obsolete, just the number's been changed. Look at that. Rubber bush then as well. To help keep the bearing snug. Oh, I'd grease this on it actually. I really think that was a molly grease. Part numbers cast under the housing itself. That's nice. Well pressed in anyway. Open bearing, standard configuration for some of the older Makita stuff. Gives it better speed, runs a lot freer. She's actually rubber sealed on the back side. This is where any fear, this is where dust and grit is going to get on. So they seal that side. This side here is pressed into the housing itself, so technically no dirt or dust can get on. Apart from a bit of plastic from the housing by the looks of it. But that's why this side is open. Allows it to run faster. And actually do last quite a long time. 
I'm still getting ones on from 1998 or 1997, still with the original bearings on them. The question is, what bearings did they use? And they used an NTN Japan bearing. Sure as hell beats the China bearings now today. So she's a 608 NTN bearing made in Japan. A really high quality bearing. I'd imagine even back then they didn't have the option of Chinese bearings. Then your field then wired on as normal. Standard field, same as most most machines even now today. The wee air deflector as well. It just helps distribute the air better. Circulate the machine, keep the motor circulate around the machine and keep the motor cool. Plastic. It's not the same as modern machines. Not sure what type of plastic it is, it is mind you. You can hear the glass on it. But imagine it's nylon, yeah, it's definitely glass fiber reinforced. These here handles were not bulletproof, but they were very, very hardy. Probably still have a couple of these old handles and stock in the workshop. That's her. Old Makita 8410BV. Even today, you can still get some modern Makita, Makita drills on sale today that would actually be built the same way as that there. Not cheap to buy, but built to last. They're not sold as often now because they wouldn't be running as fast as modern machines. Yeah, that's cool. It's not often you get something like that on now. Clean and tidy. Actually, I expect this thing to be covered in oil, to be quite honest. I assume that grease would have broken down and that oil would have seeped through it the whole machine, but she hasn't. She's just got a wee bit on the gearbox housing and here in the plastic housing. And that'll drop on the air deflector. It's actually fine. Stick her back together, give her a wee test out before putting her back in her box, letting her have another rest. Make sure there's a bit of grease on that steel bush. Make sure that ball bearing is in place. Look at how well she matches up as well. Even before she's bolted together. Nicely finished. Don't want to go too tight in them screws because only threading on the plastic. Modern impactors, you can easily strip them out. These are just designed to be hand tightened. useful configuration for them. Still see this setup as well. Earring spade goes on, threads it through there. An actual pressure on the brush spring just presses against the spade. Because this hole is elongated, it's a rectangle hole. The square will, the eyelet will go on one way. Once she turns it on flat she can't pull out again. The spring keeps it pressed out on place. Very simple method of putting the lead onto the brush holder but very effective you can see as well she's done no work that's just for me switching her on there now
everything closes up so nice. You can see where that wee leaf spring gives us a wee belt clip, a wee bit of tension, keeps it standing up straight, makes it sure it's not too rigid. And that's actually moulded onto the housing. As most of the old Makita tools, or any old tools for that matter, are all nut and bolt construction. And lastly, your nice sweet 10 mil chuck. That's all you need to do to tighten her up. Look at that. You're on full power. Thing of beauty. Let's see how she'll tackle. Modern flat butt. Definitely do it anyway. Need to avoid the nails. Some job. Struggles a wee bit on the 20, but she has a self feed butt as well, so it might be putting her under a wee bit of extra strain. But she'll still do it. It's amazing when you think about it all the tools we have nowadays tool for every job, cordless drills for putting them, tamper screws, maybe to drill the odd hole, bigger drills in for bigger stuff, slow drills and that. And you've got SDS drills in for drilling at the concrete. Back in the day, you had one tool for everything. There was no SDS drills. Very few people had a slow drill. These babies would have just done everything. Masonry and drill. Basic machine went one direction, one speed, two functions. Amazing that they did so much and that they still run today. Then again, back in the day, these things probably were a week's wages to buy. So when you bought one, you bloody well took care of it. Now machines are cheap and they're disposable. You're able to just buy one on just a half a day's wages, let alone a full week's. Yeah, cool tool. I guarantee you, if you go into your granddad's shed, you'll probably find one somewhere. And it'll still be working. Lovely piece of kit. Put her back in the box she deserves. Take her out another day. Keep her good for another day.
stack that up in the cool tool shelf. Leave it a rest for a little while.